So I'm um, giving you the uh, viewpoint of neoadjuvant chemotherapy is the way to go. And of course, um, as usual, I've been, uh, first my disclosures, I have a lot of them. I uh, do a lot of things. I'm particularly proud of doing a uh, talk for Nestle. Um, so adjuvant therapy versus neoadjuvant therapy. Of course, pancreas cancer is a systemic disease of, upon presentation. Only 10% of patients at most survive uh, 10 years with surgery alone. And the highest response rates available are for chemotherapy. Still, only 31% for fulfirinox, but as you just saw, the adjuvant data for fulfirinox is very strong. Goal of adjuvant and neoadjuvant therapy is both of them are supposed to kill micrometastatic disease, disease we cannot see but must be there because, again, surgery only cures 10% of patients. So there's a lot of disease hiding there. The truth is that chemotherapy kills best when they're the fewest cells because then there are the least number of cells that might be potentially resistant to the uh, chemotherapy. That would be a presentation, not a post-operative setting because if you take the operation and the time to recover, that's a couple months, possibly three months or even longer down the line compared to at the beginning. So in a study of patients in Ontario, Canada, they actually found that in truth, only 75% of the patients who had resected disease even received adjuvant gemcitabine, which is a lot easier to give than adjuvant fulfirinox, which I think for many patients, not all, because not all patients are healthy enough to meet the criteria, uh, adjuvant fulfirinox is now the standard of care, but even adjuvant gemcitabine, which is a lot easier to administer, a lot of patients don't receive it. So if you want to get the micrometastatic disease, you'd like 100% of the patients to actually receive it, and that chance is increased by giving it neoadjuvant. So of course, you just saw this fantastic data by Dr. Conwa and his colleagues, um, and uh, I congratulate them on uh, outstanding work and uh, results that gave us a great deal of promise. I'm not going to belabor the point, but again, the disease-free survival, these were stolen from his ASCO presentation, uh, the disease-free survival um, was not subtle, um, much better for the fulfirinox arm than the uh, gemcitabine, hence the reason why for the healthy patients that fit the modified fulfirinox criteria um, that they should be receiving it, and of course this is the overall survival. What about other data that might support preoperative therapy? This is actually preoperative radiochemotherapy versus immediate surgery for resectable and borderline resectable pancreatic cancer study presented by the Dutch um, at uh, ASCO this year. And this is the trial design where patients receive surgery followed by gemcitabine or gemcitabine with gemcitabine and uh, radiation therapy in 15 fractions. Uh, followed by the surgery and then more gemcitabine post-operative. So more of a pre-post-operative or perioperative um, setting. But once again, getting to the systemic therapy early. And the results are encouraging in that the median disease-free survival is improved. Um, now remember, this allowed borderline and uh, resectable, whereas Dr. Conwa's data was only resectable disease. So um, there are differences in the population that you wouldn't expect as good a set of outcomes even for the, for the experimental or control arm for this study as you would for Dr. Conwa's data. And it was encouraging that the median disease-free survival was better for giving the neoadjuvant therapy. We don't know the neoadjuvant therapy contribution versus radiation, although there is no actual study showing radiation to benefit a pancreas cancer patient um, currently. Somebody will hit me for that. Um, and this is the overall survival data. So um, neoadjuvant fulfirinox, um, I think, is the standard of care. Um, there have been phase two studies with as much as eight weeks of neoadjuvant fulfirinox with apparent higher rates of R0 resections. Majority of patients can receive full dose or full number of cycles of fulfirinox. And on studies when resection is unable to be performed, it's usually due to progression, not due to toxicity of therapy. And the other confounding factor in these studies is they did use radiation in a lot of them. I, I put three of the studies down on the uh, uh, references there. So with the brief time I have for this debate, fulfirinox I think is now our standard adjuvant therapy for the truly healthy patients. Postoperative fulfirinox is proven. So Dr. Hamaluka has the uh, level one evidence. I'm going to say that the level one evidence can be extrapolated to this situation where about 25% of patients lose out on the chance to get the adjuvant therapy if you give it postoperative only. 
So, um, and of course, post-operative delays the systemic therapy. One can believe, but I cannot prove, that neoadjuvant therapy would be better. It is safe and effective, and I think it deserves further study. I think it, it warrants uh, consideration um, as a strategy. Thank you.